So today we're gonna be doing three projects. So we have Gaussian splats, a very easy way of doing it. Then we have throwing. So we're just gonna be doing an app where we throw things and using the hand tracking, we're gonna try and trace out the trajectory before it actually goes through its trajectory. Um, and then finally, we're going to be doing some ports from Simon Dev. So there's a bunch of really awesome JavaScript projects online in 3.js, and it's really helpful to know how to convert those over into WebXR for the Quest 3. Gaussian splatting is super exciting, and it's also gotten so much simpler. Uh, so it used to be like that you had to do all this extra math and stuff, but like it, now it's like it's like half a page of work, and most of it is actually building the slat. So we're, I'm just going to show you off quickly. Like this is the entire web page that we need to use. So it's basically just importing a model. So because it's so simple, I, I, I just want to talk about how to get a Gaussian splat. So uh, there's two major steps to getting a Gaussian splat. So you have coal map, and then we have the running the Gaussian splat repo. So if you have some sort of video, you can just break down the video into all of its individual frames, get a subset of those frames. So like every five seconds, get a frame. Um, you can do this with the FFmpeg. Um, and once you do that, uh, you can get use coal map to get the position of all of the cameras. Then you can just go over to the Gaussian splat repo and just run it and it, it's all pretty straightforward I'm um, like the installation is probably the most challenging part I found that like coal map and uh, the repo weren't working very good on the same services I just used different servers for both yeah and then you can just get some really awesome Gaussian splats really straightforward I was using vast AI but there's a lot of other kind of um, dockerized uh, GPU setups that you can get on the internet I want to do a quick comparison between Gaussian splats and meshrooms so this is like traditional photogrammetry and you can see the like contrast is really big like there's been a lot of improvements and it's just so this one does run into a little bit of performance issue when you start doing recording especially um so i'm going to be using a lot of mobile um web xr footage instead of quest 3 because a lot of the quest 3 footage ended up being really stuttered and um a lot of it looks better when you actually look through it without the screen recorder i the screen recorder just apparently is like it got maxed out or something and like just fell apart. So <laughs> it does run into issues once you start getting up to the larger file sizes. If you don't have a full 360 of the image in question, you can still make a Gaussian splat with it. Um, but it, it does, it is like a directional Gaussian splat. Like as you move further away from the angles that you took it, it starts looking worse. But this can be a really big advantage for like if you have mountains in the distance or things that you're not going to get near to anyways, uh, because you don't need to have like a full 360 of the mountains in the background. Like uh, I think in a lot of ways, this is actually a really good advantage for with normal photogrammetry you end up structures that don't converge and then it just all falls apart so like I think this is actually an improvement over that I also really like how Gaussian splats do reflections so it does water a lot better than meshroom and other photogrammetry things and basically just reconstructs a shadow version under the actual version which is like just a neat kind of consequence of how reflections work and stuff like it, it just assumes there's this like shadow universe underneath um and yeah i just i, I appreciate that um and it looks really realistic because th that's kind of in a sense like what their like a reflection is another nice addition is that there's these really nice gaussian splat editors and they allow you to do things like remove extra gaussian splats and orient your gaussian splat to be the like right way up um and that just allows things to be simpler down the line uh gaussian splats often Oftentimes they create like these smoke or sky um, extra splats and th those are really annoying to deal with. So just being able to like quickly cut them out and delete them really cleans up your, your um, Gaussian splat and makes it look a lot more premium. <laughs> Okay, so now for the hand tracking app. So uh, basically, there's two major components. Uh, we need to calculate out when, like, the velocity and the position when it's thrown, um, and then we need to get the trajectory and then plot the trajectory. Um, so to start off with, we'll use hand tracking, um, and then we're basically going to just model the hand as pinching, um, and then when that pinch uh, becomes large enough, then we will record the position and velocity. And the velocity is just going to be um, every instant in motion we are just going to take the two positions and then calculate the velocity in that really straightforward way where we take the difference in positions and then we divide it by the time difference um and that'll give us our starting position and velocity and from that we can actually calculate the entire trajectory uh this is basically just going to be um kind of standard kinematics where you have uh the initial position and velocity and then you also take into account gravity so that's going to be pulling downwards y is our downwards axis um and then yeah so the 
the code is like pretty straightforward. Um, there are so many ways that you can improve this. This is not like, so in, in particular, uh, when we're t doing velocity measurements, uh, because we're taking it from instance to instance um, in a discretized system, that creates a lot of noise and it creates a lot of extra error. So that's something that is going to cause extra problems. Um, also, when we are doing the trajectory, uh, we are doing instances. Um, also, the throwing, like the actual pinching. Um, one of the things that I didn't realize before starting this is you can you can just throw things with your fingers. Like you don't need to use your whole arm. If you flick it, flicking um, actually can you can flick things really far, and it, it's almost entirely finger energy. Um, and so that's something that like um, our system is not modeling that really well. It's only really modeling the energy from like the arm really well. So like that kind of just like using your fingers to let go of things rather than throwing things with your fingers um and there's so many extra ways that you can do the modeling of the hand and kind of throw there's so many different ways of throwing that like this is a really simplistic method um i just yeah um this is a good way of getting started but there's probably a lot of ways that you could expand upon this so for this next project, uh, I'm going to be porting one of Simon Dev's projects into Quest 3. Uh, there's so many awesome 3GS tutorials on the internet, and almost all of those can be converted over into Quest 3 pretty straightforward, like in a pretty straightforward way. So in particular, we're going to be using the star, like the battle star thing. Uh, <laughs> yes, the battle star thing. Um, so for, yeah, so when you're porting from 3GS into Quest 3, uh, there's going to be a few different steps that you need to ta undertake uh, to start off with you need the um, XR button so uh, you can just import that and then you also need to enable it in the renderer so after that there's three core elements that are going to change all of the HTML elements are not going to be available in the same way so you're gonna have to think of some way of rendering those we're just gonna ignore that for today then you have to figure out the control mechanisms so uh, normally you have some sort of like keyboard or some sort of control thing that you're gonna have to consider how you're gonna do that uh, and then finally Finally, we have the scaling. So all of our scenes in a uh, 3GS scene, like a lot of times you just scale it to what's appropriate for like the camera distance and stuff. And so usually a lot of times you use like hundreds of units of measurement, uh, but all, but those don't convert well to metrics. So a lot of times you have to scale down all of your models and all of your like any sort of like graphical thing, like you tend to have to scale down. Um, it's really nice if you just choose a static number like um, on a hundred scaling um, and then just use the scale laws and just bring all all your things down the size and then that's pretty much it like those are those are kind of the three things that you have to consider and then you just need to add the button and that's basically it thanks and have a great day